Hey, Smarter News. Let's see if third time is the charm with an Instagram Live. Just trying to give you some of the top stories that you need to know for this week and get you all caught up on this coronavirus variant that everyone's talking about. Now, the news is following a familiar pattern. It could be something, it could be nothing, it could be something in between. And this applies to a lot of different stories that are sort of on the horizon. That includes the coronavirus variant, which I'll explain in just a moment. But before we just jump into the deep end after a holiday weekend where we're like, what day is it? What time is it? Where are we? <laughs> Let me just talk to you a little bit about what's going on this week. So starting off this week, we're watching Iran nuclear talks in Vienna. We always watch what's going on here because there's a question about whether or not Iran is pursuing nuclear weapons. To some, it's very clear that they are. They, of course, are denying this. Iran is a State Department designated state sponsor of terror. So we're always watching to see what Iran's doing because of its designation. That means it's actually sponsoring terror groups or funding them around the world. So we're always paying attention to that. We're also waiting to see what the Biden administration's posture is on these talks and whether and how involved potentially the U.S. could, could jump back into these talks. A couple other things you should know that are happening in Washington, D.C. The Supreme Court is going to be hearing this big case on abortion on the Mississippi, uh, what's called the heartbeat law. That's really important to watch. It never was a law that went into effect, but the potential ruling on this law could have ripple effects. So we're going to pay attention to that. And then, of course, the whole entire government could shut down potentially if there's no spending bill that's agreed upon by the end of the week. Oh, and we get a jobs report on Friday, which is the last jobs report for the year that will give us an unemployment rate. So there's a lot going on. And we're going to kind of take things step by step. But in the backdrop to all of these stories is what's happening with the pandemic. And I know you've heard, I mean, here's one thing we didn't want to hear about on Thanksgiving, which is a brand new variant that everyone's kind of losing their minds about. We're not going to lose our minds. We're going to actually talk a little bit about what this is and give you a foundation. The president is going to be speaking in about 40 minutes. And so we'll watch for news on that. So I'm, so I'm coming to you before the president speaks. But here's a couple of things that you should know about variants in general. In some ways, the news is sort of positioning this like it's a brand new coronavirus. This is not a brand new coronavirus. This is a variant of an existing coronavirus. So it's still SARS-CoV-2. It's still the same coronavirus that we've been dealing with for almost two years now. So that's really important to, to note. It's not like this brand, wow, like we've never seen this before. No, it does look a little different, which is why we're calling it a variant, a variant of concern. By the way, the World Health Organization designates that. The CDC can also designate a variant of concern in America, but I wanna show you this chart. What's really important to note is that this is one of five variants of concern. So you know Delta, right? We've talked a lot about Delta, but have you le learned a lot about Alpha or Beta or Gamma? Those are also variants of concern. And the question is with variants of concern is whether or not they're different enough that the transmissibility of the virus changes, the severity of the illness changes, or any of our public health policy uh, policies in place somehow don't work quite as well. This is what qualifies a variant of concern. Is this something? Is this nothing? Is it something in between? We don't know. We don't have the research yet on it. And so before we get all spun up about it, although you are seeing a lot of countries make moves, that could be expected because of some other reasons. And I'll explain that in a, sec in a second. Let's talk about what a variant looks like and talk a little bit about your immune system. We've talked about this in the past. Let's say the SARS-CoV-2 virus is a criminal, right? And we have a sketch of that criminal and our bodies know how to identify that criminal. And then suddenly the criminal changes a little bit. Their appearance sort of changes. And in fact, it sort of keeps changing a little bit more. And then it changes a little bit more. And the question becomes whether or not we recognize, well, nice ears, right? <laughs> we recognize the virus enough that our bodies still say, hey, you look a little different, but I know you. So let me leave the purple hair on in a moment. You know when you're walking down the street and you see somebody that you recognize, but you're not quite sure how, and you're like, what's her name, what's her name, what's her name? Susie from Geometry. Hey, Susie, how are you? that you're walking down the street and you see someone and you don't know their name and then that name comes to you like three days later, right? And you're like, ah, oh, it was Susie from Geometry. So your immune system sort of works the same way. We have an awareness, our immune system, of viruses. Your body probably has an awareness of some sort related to the SARS-CoV-2 
to virus, the new coronavirus. It may have it because you had it already. It may have it because you received a vaccine. Uh, it may ha have it because of exposure. Like we don't really know. What we really want is to make sure that your body recognizes the new coronavirus quickly. So if it needs to mount a defense against it, it can. The variants though, make it a little bit more disguised. And so the question becomes, well, how quickly can your body recognize this and identify it and fight against it? No matter what your immunity looks like. I don't care whether or not you have, you know, immunity from any number of different ways at this point. So that's the, that's the big question. And guess what? Here's the big kind of secret to this whole news story too, is that you're a miracle. Like you are truly unique and different. So it's very hard to anticipate what your body is going to do. It's hard to anticipate that now with Delta, for example, like it was, it was hard to anticipate that at the beginning of the pandemic. And it's also hard because you see people that are perfectly healthy that get affected by COVID-19 and others that don't look that healthy get that are totally fine with it. And so this is where we are with this variant right now, Omicron. It doesn't really roll off the tongue as easy as Delta, does it? That's where we're at. We don't really know whether or not it's going to be worse than anything that we've seen. Is the possibility there? Sure, this virus is going to change and it's gonna change a lot. And it's probably gonna be something that we're hearing a lot about. And there may be a policy in place for variants, for example, as they come up before we actually know uh, what they look like or what they actually will mean for the public. I, you know, I was thinking about this this weekend, just going back to an interview I did with Dr. Michael Lynn at Stanford University way at the beginning of this. And I, I just wanna add this into the conversation. He said, the thing about the SARS COV2 virus is that it's like a movie sequel. The first SARS virus was, you know, the first movie that came out is always kind of the better, more effective one. The first SARS virus was effective. It killed a lot of people real fast. And then it, the contagion stopped because it, because you got it and you died. The sequel, which is what we're in right now, SARS-CoV-2, is not as good. It's not as effective. It's not as deadly. It, and because it's not as deadly, it's actually more contagious. And that's why we're continuing to deal with this question about contagion and what that's going to look like. But that's what I want you to know about the variant. Number one, we don't have the research yet to understand whether or not this is more deadly. This is more contagious. We have some indications to believe that maybe it is, but we don't have the research yet. That's number one. Number two, these variants, as they come up, it's a question about whether or not your body can easily recognize them and mount a defense against them. And we're going to see variants come up periodically. So if you have any questions, Questions about that, please go ahead and add them under the, the questions and comments section because I want to make sure that we can address as many as possible because it is concerning. Can I show you something that actually is probably more important than any of this about the what ifs? Because we're in hypothetics when it comes to the variants. Let me show you this. This is what a COVID-19 hospitalizations look like in America. And what you should know is infections and hospitalizations have risen in the past weeks. Why is that important? I wanna direct you to the middle, the big spike in the middle, because that was last November, December, January, and February. The question that we're facing right now is, are we gonna see that seasonality come back where we're gonna see a rise in hospitalizations and potentially deaths? That's gonna be the most important thing. And you should know in the backdrop of this, is that we're seeing those cases continue to rise. Cases and hospitalizations, deaths haven't, but remember deaths lag those other data points for several weeks. So I just want you to be aware that that's, that's happening too. So when a public health official is looking at this, they're not just looking at this new variant you know, in a vacuum, they're looking at with what else is happening and that's kind of the backdrop of what else is happening. All right, guys, hope you're doing okay and keep me posted on any of the questions that you have about any of these stories. I know you guys have a lot of interest as well in the Jeseline Maxwell trial. That's something that's starting in New York. It's a case related to Jeff, the Jeffrey Epstein case as well. We're taking a look at that and hopefully give you a foundation report for that trial that's going to be ongoing. And we'll have more on any of these big stories, including what the president has to say a little later on today on this new variant. So keep you posted. When you think of the variant, think of this. Do, do you still recognize me? Hopefully you do. <laughs> and that's what we hope is that our body still recognize these COVID-19 or these SARS-CoV-2 variants and can continue to mount a defense no matter what they look like. You know what? I feel like this really works for me. I never would go for this color, but I think that it does. All right, guys, have a great start to your week. We're going to have more on all these stories on smarternews.com. I'll see you later.